Joined um, in the studio now by the independent TD for Dublin Central, Maureen O'Sullivan. Deputy O'Sullivan, welcome to the programme. Thank you. There is few places more Dublin Central mm-hmm. than Moore mm-hmm. Street, uh, not for its its uh, street traders, but rather for in 2016, mm-hmm. its mm-hmm. connection with the rising. What are mm-hmm. your concerns? OK, my concerns today are the concerns that I have been talking about in the Dáil for the past few years. The You've done the tour with the relatives yourself. I've been on it many times. And you know that the journey from the GPO right around to Moore Street, around the laneways, onto Parnell Street, where the surrender was uh, happened, every few yards tells a story. So something historic, something significant happened at so many places along that street and in the laneways and the alleyways. Our National Museum and the Imperial War Museum in England have designated, have said that this area is a battlefield site. So the difficulty is is that the Minister has only designated 14 to 17 as a national monument, so she's saying they are the only buildings over which she has any authority. But the point that's being... that saying the other houses Mm -hmm. in Moore Street, A, were not actually part of the Mm -hmm. battlefield per se, and B, are the responsibility of Dublin City Council. This is part of the whole debacle, and you used that word earlier, um, because a litany of mistakes have been made with the area um, from successive governments and also from Dublin City Council. We do know that other buildings on Moore Street were used. Number 10, for example, was where they broke through first and where the first Council of State was held. We also know that Michael Collins was in one of the other buildings. 20 to 21 was where the volunteers sat and discussed whether to accept the, the, the surrender order. I accept that there are buildings there that are not pre-1916. But the point some of us have been making for a long time is that we need a different vision for the area. That is a historical cultural quarter. Dublin does not need another shopping centre. And if she is saying that she only has control over 14 to 17, surely the surrounding areas should be appropriate to that national monument. You wouldn't imagine and we used the example of Anne Frank House in Amsterdam, that there would be a, a multinational or a supermarket living over it or on top of it. So it's about sensitivity. All right. Mm. That's an interesting point because we did get, and we're obviously mm-hmm. from Heather Humphrey's department, when they heard we were doing this, yeah. I shouldn't I, sh- <laughs> I shouldn't have warned them, but the Department of uh, Arts, Heritage and the Cul- uh, Culture, they make the point you're, mm-hmm. you've just enunciated. It's 14 to 17 mm-hmm. Moore Street they're saying number 13 and number 18 weren't uh, uh, historically mm-hmm. important in fact they say like that some of them were in ruins at mm-hmm. the time now this is all of course technically correct mm-hmm. you make a really interesting point which I think listeners because remember a huge number of people listening haven't been in Moore mm-hmm. Street and they don't know what it's like the, the thing about this is that if you go to Gettysburg, for argument's mm-hmm. sake, you really sense, you yes. know, a battle took mm-hmm. place there. Amazingly, if you go to East Sussex, mm-hmm. they've actually made an effort regarding 1066, mm-hmm. like which was a thousand mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, how you kind of can have this national mm-hmm. monument somehow sandwiched between people selling hot dogs, mm. I really don't get. I know. Is this, you don't dispute the accuracy of what the Minister and her department is saying about certain houses. I can accept that about certain houses, yeah. but my question is to her, why can she not designate the whole site a national monument? Because to everybody, that's what it is. Regardless of the state of some of the other buildings, the whole area is a battlefield site and there is such huge potential for it to be that historical quarter and to link up with the plans that they have for Parnell Square. I mean, it doesn't make sense to put another shopping centre or whatever Hammersmith are going to come up with. Um, there How is much is being the, the developers? Yes, the developers chartered land originally, ended up in NAMA, and now it's Project Jewel, which was sold on to Hammersmith in, with Allianz. Um, the, the whole idea is that there could be so much there on the lower part of those buildings for small and medium businesses, for craft shops, for cafes, for something to do with the Irish language, and over it, housing, because people lived in Moore Street years ago. And I know that there are housing associations who would be delighted to restore those but houses. You see, 
again, mm -hmm. you you think of like a city like Bath, right? You yeah. go uh, the way they preserve mm -hmm. the Roman baths, yeah. and also more importantly, the Regency buildings mm -hmm. from yes. from George III and so on. You you drive along Marylebone Road in London, and suddenly you start to come um, to Regent's mm -hmm. Park, and you see all these wonderful houses mm -hmm. and preserved. We have a happy knack though, of knocking everything down. Absolutely. And if you were watching Scannell the other night about Wood Key, you could just take the words Wood Key out and put in Moore Street. Pat Wallace from the museum was on talking about Wood Key. He's the person who would agree that this is a battlefield site. We have just an appalling lack of respect for our history. Well, I mean... I, I, I've, I've told a story many times I'm, I'm in Virginia you know mm -hmm. and I'm heading to a place and then I suddenly find a sign from the Civil War and, and what it does eventually is it traces Lee's retreat mm -hmm. all the way to Appomattox yeah. so you're driving along and you've got all these signs mm -hmm. you're stopping every couple of miles yeah. because it's telling you what what happened mm -hmm. in these last days of mm -hmm. the Civil War mm -hmm. Now, when you go to oh, oh, the GPO mm -hmm. and you go up then towards Moore Street and I mean, you get no sense mm -hmm. of, like, this is where they mm -hmm. broke through and mm -hmm. this is what, like, even some of the information you're giving me mm -hmm. will be new to many mm -hmm. people listening. This is where they mm -hmm. sat yes. discussing the mm -hmm. surrender. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is that time when people are watching television mm -hmm. on Sunday nights about the rebellion, yeah. where we're going to make a big palaver in, in March, April about centenary and we're knocking mm. down the living evidence mm. of it. And, and you can imagine that if that had been restored as a proper walkway through the streets of history, I mean, that's what people come to Dublin for. They don't come here to shop. And I would say, I mean, one of the most poignant stories, as you know, is the story of the Arahali and the place where he fell and where he had a very long, prolonged death and he managed to write that really and wonderful letter to, to, to so. Prunchy's Arahali. Yeah. And there's plans for a hotel there and where that wall is could be the service entrance into the hotel. And can I just go back, I mean the street trading tradition is historic in that area. And they are under threat at the moment from all of the supermarkets, all the businesses around them. A different rest restoration of Moore Street would very much complement they're the old street trading tradition that but, is but there. But again, you talk about street trading like you you go to a place in mm -hmm. London called Borough, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a place mm -hmm. called Borough Market. Mm -hmm. You know, even my beloved Cork, the way they have the kept mm -hmm. the English market. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you knock these things down, you can't put them back together. Exactly. Like, this isn't Humpty Dumpty. Exactly. You know? And what we will probably end up doing is money, somebody will have money to do a virtual reality game of the street, of the, the progress from the GPO around to Parnell Street, whereas we have the actual fabric of the whole battlefield site there. I, I mean, you could. I mean, with imagination mm -hmm, here, yeah, and yeah. you could make this really special. I mean, you know, I think of my grandchildren now, and they have no sense of of this. Mm -hmm. What happened in this battle and this war of mm -hmm. independence? You know, yeah. um, I mean, you you can go past. Let's face it, you go past Bowen's Bakery, you're mm -hmm. not going to find much there either. So, like, is there going to be nothing left? I mean, within. Three or four mm -hmm. years, is there going to be nothing left? Is that what we're going to see there of is, anything? Yeah, that is a very real possibility that all that will be there will be 14 to 17 National Monument. And I've no doubt that it will be done very well. Um, and I would hope in a dignified, sensitive way. But around it, the, the whole battlefield site will be gone. Yeah, but, I mean, Chris Byrne does make the point that Moore Street isn't a very uh, smart-looking place at mm -hmm. the moment. We have to do something with that. True. And it's because it has been allowed to go into dereliction all over the years. And I mean, Chartered Land also have a, a role in that, that they did not preserve what was a designated in a, a national monument. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, now, interestingly, somebody says, Deputy yourself and Gabby, serious, ask mm -hmm. her to walk the Berlin Wall. And there's mm -hmm. a Starbucks beside the mm -hmm. Anne Frank House. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the it's battlefield a hundred years later, mm -hmm. they're calling it a battlefield. But yeah. Gettysburg yeah. is well over a hundred years. Exactly. Gettysburg's but, 150 mm -hmm. or thereabouts. Yeah. And I mean, part of that street was pre-famine. So there's a huge, huge history in it and, and and putting buildings that are modern on a city of such historic significance, it just does not sit right. But that is true. Like, mm -hmm. the, the British do this much better, isn't mm -hmm. it fair to say? That mm -hmm. they, they, like, when you see films, they're able to, to get 
stuff done because it still looks like it did a hundred mm-hmm. years ago. Isn't that mm-hmm. right? We don't do that. It'd be very difficult to, to do stuff looking a hundred years old mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. Whereas we, we have it there in reality and again it's just coming down to the potential that is there that it could be a completely different area, historical, cultural quarter and that does make money. It makes economic sense as well. Uh, because we still like tourism mm. is a hugely mm-hmm. important part. You got to, got to like uh, it may or may not be a Starbucks next to the Anne mm. Frank House, but uh, the point is you don't actually come to Dublin for a Starbucks. No, you no. can find Starbucks anywhere. Exactly, you can't mm-hmm. find yeah. this yeah. extraordinary event that yeah. took place yeah. hundred years. I met ago. a very interesting woman. I think she was from Holland. She's got involved with the relatives group, and she read about the Easter Rising, and she came over to Ireland to see. Uh, obviously, came to the GPO, and then she walked around to where the surrender was, and she, like many others, could not believe that this was how an area of such historic significance was treated. Well, uh, where did the surrender take place? The surrender was a great... Well, this picture yeah. we see mm-hmm. of, of Pierce mm-hmm. and Maxwell, wasn't yeah. that right? Mm-hmm. He was a general. That picture yes. we see, that iconic yeah. picture, where yeah. was that? It was along by the Rotunda. I know one of the local um, drinking establishments had taken claim on it at being at their door and they had a plaque. It's no longer in, in operation, but they had a plaque on their doorway. But it's actually across the road near the, uh, along by the Rotunda. But, I mean, you cannot follow mm. uh, this period, mm. this short, very short mm. period of, of, of the rising, mm. which ended in failure but ultimate success um, six years later. You, you, you can't follow that. Mm. I think one of the great things of living history mm-hmm. as opposed to history from a book, and this is where young people um, would benefit, that you could actually follow it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You can't follow mm-hmm. it in Ireland. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, for me, and I ended up, I was teaching history for many years by, from Eastwall, my secondary school was Mount Carmel, Kings Inn Street and I was always conscious when I got the bus into town and I'd walk along past the GPO and I'd come around into Moore Street, Moore Lane and I was so conscious that I was walking on the lanes of history. Yeah, because only a couple of weeks ago I was near, near Bray Golf Club, mm-hmm. you know, and something that I know about, you've got all this signage of where films were made mm-hmm. in that area because there were a huge number of films mm-hmm. made there, mm-hmm. particularly by John Borman and so on. And, and But you can follow the mm-hmm. trail Exactly. You can fo- but this is following a chain of movies, for heaven's sake. Yes. This is living. Yeah, yeah, I'm really yeah. surprised. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, the, I, the department and their response is accurate. You mm-hmm. agree I, that some of these houses were not part of, mm-hmm. of the affair. But they're going to do mm-hmm. just a yeah. piecemeal job yeah. rather yeah. than a total. Exactly. Isn't that not, the yeah, that, that, that's, that's the nub of it. And the other fact, fact is that they have not taken recognition of the other houses along that street which are of historical significance and are pre-1916. I know the relatives have called for an independent assessment. The Minister claims enough assessments have been done. I don't believe a proper independent assessment was done. And you could imagine... Um, that that area is a hyster- historical quarter and you link up with the GPO and then you would come around into Moore Street, into Parnell Street, at the Parnell Monument where the, the men were, up then to Richmond Barracks, uh, Kilmainham Jail, down to the North Wall. I mean, there's just such massive potential there for a different kind of restoration in Dublin. Uh, well, I can tell you, the mm. last time I did a walk like that was in the great city of Toulouse mm. and we're talking about Napoleon mm. and they've succeeded mm. in keeping alive um, the Napoleon mm-hmm. and where he stabled his horses mm-hmm. in the cathedral and all that. Mm-hmm. I think other cities do care about they history do. much better yeah. than we do. Yeah. All right, mm-hmm. I wish you well, but <laughs> I, I think the minister is not for turning. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, we do reported mm-hmm. on their um, response to my guest, mm-hmm. independent TD for Dublin Central, Maureen O'Sullivan. Deputy O'Sullivan, thank you for joining me.